Today we are going to start talking about the first module on qualitative research methods. It is introduction to qualitative research methods which will include information on types, challenges and limitations of qualitative research methods. The specific objectives of this module are at the end of this module the student will understand the concept of qualitative research, learn the types of qualitative research and comprehend the challenges and limitations of qualitative research. Before going into the characteristics of qualitative research, let us see why qualitative research methodology or paradigm emerged. It started out out of the need that was felt to understand the other. The quantitative uh, research which was based on the positivist paradigm which is a traditional approach to conduct research studies focused on quantifiable majors, assessment, statistics which helped them to take information from the sample and generalize it to the larger populations. But more and more especially with the colonization of communities. Uh, it was felt that somebody from the other community or other culture cannot really understand the nitty gritty of people's interactions, cultures, customs, behaviors, interactions only through numbers. Because of this to really understand the other qualitative research paradigm emerged. Qualitative researchers studied the phenomena in its natural settings and attempted to make sense of or interpret it in terms of the meanings people bring to them. In other words, they looked at how people understand and interpret their own realities. The beginning of qualitative research was with early ethnographic studies in 17th century. These ethnographic studies involved the researcher to go to other cultures, other communities, stay there for a long period of time, really interact with them, be one of them and understand their culture the way they understand and interpret it. Denzin and Lincoln in 2005 highlighted eight moments of qualitative research history starting from the first phase called the traditional period to what they termed as the eighth moment which is the eighth phase called the present and the future. They defined qualitative research as a methodology which is multi-method in focus involving an interpretive naturalist approach to its subject matter. Another definition has been given by Cresswell. According to Cresswell which is cited in Sogorno 2002, qualitative research is an inquiry process of understanding a social or human problem based on building a complex holistic picture formed with words, reporting detailed views of informants and conducted in a natural setting. Gay and Arasian in 2000 proposed that qualitative research is a collection of extensive data on many variables over an extended period of time in a naturalistic setting in order to gain insights not possible using other types of research. Let us look at if this is what qualitative research is, then what are its characteristics? The first characteristic as has been mentioned in all the definitions is it is inductive in nature. The research process starts at the field and the data collected leads to theory development and not the other way around. It does not start from theory and then goes to data collection. It starts from data collection at the field and from the data collected at the field the theory is developed. It has strong orientation to everyday life and events. It believes people's interactions and behaviors should not be reduced to statistical equations. So statistics, numbers, frequencies, percentages are not the focus in qualitative research. What is focused is the meanings and interpretations of these behaviors and interactions. The fourth characteristic is there is minimal manipulation of the research setting. The phenomena is studied as it occurs 
and as it is recalled without researcher's directive control or researcher manipulating any of the conditions as happens in an experimental study. The fifth characteristic is it consists of a spectrum of methods from which one can be chosen depending on the research topic. Then the sixth is data are gathered by flexible open ended questions, open ended methods and the diversity of participant responses is valued. It is considered important to have diversity of responses as against a quantitative research where what majority say or feel is considered important. It emphasizes interaction between the researcher and the researched and thus reduces distance between them. Researched term is used to denote two way relationship, equal relationship, relationship in which there is partnership rather than the term respondent. It recognizes the inevitability of influences from researchers personal characteristics and alignments like philosophical orientation, gender, social class, race and ethnicity. In other words, the kind of belief on which uh, positivist ba was based on that uh, the researcher should be completely objective and he should observe a phenomena like a fly on the wall in which his own perceptions, biases are not affecting anything that is happening uh, in the room or in the setting in which he is studying is a fallacy. Qualitative researchers or qualitative research paradigm recognizes that the researcher's own personal characteristics, beliefs and values are also going to affect the research process. This does not mean that it allows the research to be biased. It means the researcher should be aware that there are these influences which are playing part so that the in these influences can be minimized. Let us look at what are the types of qualitative research. The first type is case studies. A typical case might include individuals or it might include just a role or an occupation, organizations or a community or a case can even be a country. There are different designs of case study like single case design where only one case is studied in depth, multiple case design embedded case design and holistic case design. The second type is ethnography. As I said qualitative research paradigm the earlier studies were ethnographic studies. Ethnographical research aims at recording as accurately as possible the perspective modes of life of various groups. In other words the relationship between the culture and the behavior of people in communities. The third type is ethnomethodology. Ethnomethodology studies people's daily practices or procedures for creating and maintaining a sense of objective reality. It is similar to ethnography, but where ethnography will focus more on cultures, here certain practices, customs, modes of behaviors are more the focus of the study. The next type is symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism works on three basic premises. The first premise is people interpret the meaning of objects and actions in the world and then act upon those interpretations. Therefore, reality might not be same for different people because the same reality might be perceived and interpreted differently. The second premise is meanings arise from the process of social interaction. How a person interacts with the other person also has influence upon the way the other person perceives and reacts to the previous action and meanings arise out of this whole process. The third premise is meanings are handled in and are modified by an interactive process used by people in dealing with the phenomena that are encountered. All these three premises 
highlight the fact that reality is not objective. It is very much subjective and it can be best understood by understanding the symbolic interpretations that people give to the phenomena that they are experiencing. The next type of qualitative study is phenomenology. Phenomenological research requires researchers to keep aside their prevailing understanding of the phenomena and relearn the new meanings of the same through immediate experience of these same phenomena. In other words, phenomenology is basically a qualitative approach to understand the experiences of people keeping aside your own interpretations and your own similar experiences. The next type of qualitative research study is narrative analysis. The goal of qualitative research using a narratological tradition is to collate the data in a narrative form and interpret it to understand the human experience. The meaning comes from the story. The research report is also written like a story. Then is grounded theory. Grounded theory approach is a method for discovering theories, concepts, hypotheses and propos propositions directly from data rather than from a priori assumptions, other research or existing theoretical frameworks. Glaser and Strauss who have proposed this type of qualitative research study in fact say that do not do or at least do minimal of literature review before going to the field. Preferably do not read anything related to the phenomena that you are going to study in the field so that whatever you read in your literature review based on the previous studies then do not influence you at all and you look at the data that is coming to you from the field as it is. That is the grounded theory approach to qualitative research. Then the next type of qualitative research is participatory action research. In simple words, participatory research means conducting research with members of a community to understand the issues faced by the community and initiate action through a process that would empower community members and democratize research. Participatory action research is really where research is used as one of the intervention strategies to bring about empowerment or positive changes in the life of people. In social work, this has been one of the important type of qualitative research study organizations or social workers have engaged in. The next type of qualitative research is cultural studies. As the name suggests, cultural studies focus generally on those who are marginalized and at the ages of modern culture using sources drawn from anthropology, social and cultural history and psychoanalysis. So it has a blend of ethnography which looks at culture and psychoanalysis which is looking at the psychological processes that are going inside at the individual level. The next type of qualitative study is gender studies. Gender studies have actually emerged from feminism but they have gone a step beyond that in that they explore the process of construction and reconstruction of gender identities and inequalities. Therefore, though most of the gender studies would definitely look at the gender discriminations, the kind of inequality women face in the world by terming it as gender studies, they include all genders in the society. What are the strengths of qualitative research? The first and the most important strength is it reduces gap between theory and practice because it is inductive in nature. It starts from the data in the field and then the theory is developed. Second strength is it offers an understanding of a phenomenon as close as possible to those who have experienced or are experiencing it. And this is possible because it is done in a natural setting without manipulation of the variables. 
The third strength is it regards research participants as equal partners in research process. Therefore, it has been observed that more than quantitative research paradigm, qualitative research paradigm has empowerment as also one of its focus. The fourth strength is use of multiple methods in qualitative research allows scope for unearthing, unearthing hard to obtain data which goes beyond what is obvious which is at the surface and which is visible. So, you get in depth data which is otherwise would have been hidden from people. The other strength is it helps to obtain rich descriptive data and holistic picture of the topic under study. It lends to exploration of new areas and new concepts. It is a preferred methodology for evaluation studies for many as it provides insights that change behavior, refine knowledge, identify problems and explains complex phenomena. Because in while doing evaluation, it will not only look at the numbers, but it will also look at the processes, the kind of decisions that were taken, the reasons, what went before it, what went after a particular phenomena, which gives a complete holistic picture of that which you are evaluating. The iterative nature of qualitative research process ensures that researcher has collected a comprehensive data and is truthful to it because you are not manipulating anything, you are not controlling anything, you are studying the way it is happening naturally. There is more chances of researcher reporting it as it is. However, there are certain challenges and limitations too of qualitative research. First challenge is knowledge produced might not generalize to other people or other settings because the findings are unique to that particular field, to that particular culture, to that particular group of people and there might be very few, relatively few people involved in the research study. So, there is a limitation of generalization. Second is it is difficult to make quantitative predictions because it does not have any um, statistics, any kind of numbers involved because it looks at in-depth data, the quality of data rather than quantity, any kind of statistical or mathematical calculations on the data are not possible. It is more difficult to test hypotheses and theories with large participant pools because it goes in-depth with each of the respondent related to the research topic. It cannot cover a very large sample during data collection. The next challenge or limitation is qualitative research generally takes more time to collect the data compared to quantitative research. Data analysis is also more time consuming. As a researcher is the insider or closest to the insider, there is more risk of research process and findings being influenced by the researcher's personal biases and idiosyncrasies because there is a focus on the relationship that is built between the researcher and the researched because of which it is possible to unearth the in depth data. Sometimes researcher can completely lose objectivity. Though it is accepted in qualitative research, it does become somewhat of a challenge if researcher becomes one of the respondents, there is too much alignment with the insiders. Thank you very much. This was the first model of on qualitative research. I hope you have now got a basic understanding about what qualitative research is, what are its characteristics and what are its strengths as well as limitations.